Thank you, Peter. Hi, everyone. Uh, yeah, I'm just very anxious, so I just want to put that out there first so I can move past it and, uh, and enjoy <laughs> my time with my mighty companion, <laughs> Ken Clifford. Um, so welcome, Ken. Thank it's beautiful you. to have you here. Um, mm -hmm. Ken and I are in service together at La Casa, and... Um, We've been there together for five months and um, yeah, the focus of the show as usual is going to be around projects and um, service and we're going to show a short clip of Ken actually being in the miracle of service. Um, but before that, I just want to ask Ken a few questions. And the first one being, you know, like, how did you find Living Miracles? Mm. I'm really interested to know this because <laughs> I know our paths have crossed, you know, like in England and mm. through Jenny Donner and mm. Greg. And, uh, yeah, but I don't know your story. So. Sure. Yeah, so um, I was on the emailing list of Living Miracles, but nothing ever sort of came in. And I hardly actually read them, to be honest. Then this one day I'm in bed. And uh, my phone goes, I look at this email, it's from Living Miracles. So I, d I actually decide to read it. And I find out that it is about 40 miles away from my cousin's wedding. And it's like three hour drive from my house. So I'm like, oh my God, that's pretty close. And it said an intimate um, one day gathering. And so I thought it was like people, um, there wouldn't be basically any space. And so normally I wouldn't, I wouldn't ask to go for like half a day or something. I'd find that rude. Yeah. But for some unknown reason, I felt drawn to, to say, okay. So I sent out this message and um, they got back to me straight away and said, yep, yep, come for the half a day. Okay. So then they said, do you, know where it, what? do you know where it is? And I was like, oh yeah, I know that area. Even though I'd only been there a couple of times. So it just felt like Jesus had just sort of like part, came, um, you know, parted the ways for me. So I just drove down on that day. It was just so, so easy. And as I got nearer to the place, I was like, oh, I know the parking's really terrible here. And I even know a place to park. So I've just like <laughs> parked up the car. And then I'll, and normally I have this fear of not being able to find places or whatever. But I was like totally relaxed. And I was like, oh, yeah. And, and I literally just found the place straight away, found the house. And I knock on the door. And then um, Bridget, my friend Bridget Thomas, um, yeah, who I know very yeah, well as well. Yeah, she undoes the door. And the first word she says to me, she says, I know who you are. <laughs> We've been expecting you. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> and, we just, and we just had like, this massive like, hug. And I was like, wow, this is, this is like, really beautiful. Mm. And so we were all sat in the, um, in the front room and we were waiting. And I hadn't met Jenny yet. She was in meditation. And then she came down and her and Greg and they'd done... I don't know, about an hour and a half um, teaching. And it was just really beautiful. And I felt really relaxed and just really connected. And then we had some, we had some um, lunch. And Jenny comes over to me. And she's like, hey, how are you? And I'm like, we're, we're talking away. And I'd only been into the course for about a year and a half. And I wanted to do a silent retreat. But I didn't, I'd done like a lot of Buddhist ones, but I didn't want to do that anymore because of the teachings of the Course in Miracles was what resonated. Mm. So I've been putting it out there, been praying. So literally, I'm having this conversation with Jenny. Oh, how did you get here? The, the normal stuff. And she goes, by the way, we've got a silent retreat coming up in Finland. And I was just right. like, oh my God, I'm supposed to be on this retreat. So um, they told me all about it. And I was like, okay, this is great. And then I looked at it and it just felt like it was like too much money. I couldn't afford it, but I knew that I was, I was meant to be, to be going. Mm -hmm. And so I was in contact with Jenny and she said, yeah, I really feel you're coming. And I said, but I don't know where the money's come, coming from. Cause it was like, in my money, it was like 3,500 pounds for all of the floats and everything. I'm thinking that's, that's quite a lot for me really. And this never ever happens. This final night, I'm just going to bed and I say to Jesus, listen, if you're going to pull this one off, you better hurry up because I need, I need a miracle here because I really want to go. Turned off the light. The next day, I had a really beautiful like, meditation day. And I never ever do this. It's normally my mum and dad invite me to their house. 
But after this day of normally being, being in absolute peace, I'm like, I'm going to go and see my mum and dad. So I just drive around there, knock on the door. They're like, oh my God, what are you doing here? This is just like totally out of character. Sit down, have a cup of tea. I say, oh yeah. And normally I don't ever accept anything of them. I say, I don't want anything. I was like so much pride. And so they were really concerned that they wanted to give me this gift. But they were, but it had been going on for some time. Like, how do we, how do, we do this? Because he's normally a bit, uh, <laughs> a bit funny with these sorts of things. So I'm just like sat there. And then my dad comes walking in the room and he goes, yeah, I've given this to your sister. Um, this is for you. Wow. And I goes, whoa. Like that. So then I undo it and it's a check for £3,500. And I just go, oh my God, oh my God. But that, and they're like, wow. they're, they're like expecting me to be all my normal. I don't need anything from you, all this business. I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. They're like, is there something you want to do? And I'm like, oh my God, this is amazing. <laughs> like that. They don't know anything about the Course of Miracles or Miracles or anything. I'm like, this is so great. They're like, we thought you'd be really annoyed that we'd even asked you. I was like, this is so great. Thank you so much. Oh, so it was so yeah. beautiful for them that they were I was able to receive this gift but of course the kind of ego afterwards kicked in and said you could save that money <laughs> and I was like <laughs> and I was like no and I had to mm, here you go Jenny <laughs> take it please before I change my mind and yeah that was that that, that was yeah. the change on that retreat I handed over my life to God and that was the end of it it was it was over so you came into living very cold, your life was over. I'm done with this silly life. <laughs> yeah. So no, I met you on a retreat in England. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Austin Court. Austin Court, that's right. Yeah, Another silent yeah. retreat. And um, I know now there's myself, there's you and Sue Powell actually yeah. all living at La Casa yes, together that were there. That's right. Yeah. So how long after that Finland retreat did you? Uh, I think it took about four months to move because I had a business. So I had to run mm. that down. I had to, um, I had a rented house. So I had to get rid of that and just get rid of everything. Mm. And then that was it. But it was very easy. <laughs> it wasn't hard. <laughs> <laughs> and talking of it easy, you know, like um, coming into Living Miracles yeah. and being in mm. function, mm. how was that for you? What sort of blocks were there that you had to overcome? We've talked a little bit about yeah. this, so I kind of know some of it. Well, for me, throughout all of my life, I've been sacked quite a few times from jobs um uh i don't like being told what to do um and so coming into community was like um i believe that i didn't like being around people for too long that i needed my own space and i hated being told what to do so i thought okay this is the perfect place to go <laughs> to wash all this away and so um i think it was really they're like the ego is getting in there. It's like, yeah, just be told what to do and that will like wash this away. But of course the, the resentment and everything was just still there for seven months. It was just sort of like me just being told what to do and not so really. Bad. Yeah. Not, yeah. I, I didn't really know what I was doing to be honest. I was like trying to forgive all the time. Just like, I oh, forgive that. I forgive that. Nothing seems to be happening. I'm not feeling happier. You know, just the normal sort of like, yeah, I'm feeling good today, but not the true happiness of god did the expression sessions help with yeah, that yeah really really helped let up a lot i had a lot of anger and i cleared a massive amount in the beginning which kind of because i thought everybody would reject me because i felt really really angry mm. and so i thought it's not acceptable and i got more love <laughs> from expressing it all okay. and so i felt really yeah. safe just to be able to say everything that mm. was on my mind yeah. And that was really, really helpful. But yet this major thing was, I don't know where it come from, but no one tells me what to do. I basically had that. Yeah. And that's why I set up my own business. So I wouldn't have to deal with any of that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> I know that, uh, you know, the expression sessions and listening to you actually talking through your anger mm. has been so helpful for me to get in touch with a lot of those emotions in, um, yeah, can I say a more adult way rather than <laughs> jumping up and down and screaming? <laughs> it's been really helpful. But um, I know that you went through something through um, 
been involved in the maintenance mm. team that really <clears throat> brought yeah a, mm. a change about for you so mm. uh, and that's what the video's about we're going mm. to show that after you've mm. just spoken us into it really ken yeah like i done like building work most of my life because i felt so unworthy to do anything else <clears throat> and so i would just take these crappy jobs and so um then I became a psychotherapist and sort of like seemingly redeemed myself. Um, okay. And then it was like, you're going to be doing maintenance. And it was like, this is so beneath me. Um, and, but there was so much like unworthiness, like I'm going to be shown to be useless at this. Mm -hmm. So it was just yeah. bringing up a lot of stuff in the beginning. And there was a lot of resistance to even taking on the task to actually allow it to be washed. It was quite funny, actually. I was on the, I was on the bus one day. I think I was ordering up an Apple computer. Um, I was traveling along to IE and I was on the bus and I was with Jesus and I said to him, why did you give me this maintenance area? I said, because I don't want to do it. So you seem to be giving me everything that I don't want to do. What have I done wrong? And his words were, well, you asked for it. And I was like, oh yeah. Then I'd forgotten about say four months earlier. I was like, I really feel I need to wash this. <laughs> Okay. So he was reminding me, <laughs> you asked for it. <laughs> I was like, okay, fair enough. <laughs> I'll stop blaming you. <laughs> so, yeah. so, yeah, it was really, really difficult. And it was exactly, I, I played out exactly the same thing. Is it got to the point where literally I could not lift another nail. I could not see another hammer. I was like, I am done. I'm absolutely done with this. I am not going to do it anymore. If you want me to leave the community, I will. I don't care. I am not doing it so far because it's just, oh, it was horrible. And I felt like I was letting down Dan. I was letting down Craig. They were like, no, 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 you're not. This is good. Like, I'm glad you're expressing. So I said straight away, no, you don't have to do the maintenance. So then, of course, I felt like I'd let everybody down. Like, oh, we need him to do it. But, and of course, that's not how it is. But that's what sent me into the deeper prayer. Mm -hmm. because then I just thought, this is just the pattern of life. This is what I've always done. Get to the point. I'm not doing it. See you later. Mm -hmm. And that's the time when yeah. you leave. That's what I'll just leave. Yeah. They'd either get moment. rid of me or yeah. I'd get rid of them. One of the, either, either way, it was just on the cars. It was just mm -hmm. a matter of who was going to get there first, so to speak. So it's just that whole pattern again mm -hmm. of like, you know, it's not, it's not others, it's you. <laughs> that's what my dad used to say to me. It's you. You're the one that's got the problem, not everyone else. And I was like, well, he's probably actually right here. <laughs> <laughs> and so I had to um, really pray and think, mm -hmm. listen, I'm just wasting everybody's time here. If I'm going to be acting out the same stuff over and over again, I want this done. I want to be happy. That's the reason why I've come here. Yeah. Like a willingness to be exactly. wrong about the whole thing. Exactly. So I gave myself a month. I said, right, listen, if you're going to turn all this around or I'm going to turn it around or whatever it is that I need to do, I've got a month. Otherwise, I'm leaving. Because in a way, then it was like, if I wasted my own time, it was like, so what? Mm -hmm. But to feel like there were others that I was wasting their time and I've been given this opportunity to be in living miracles and to really heal my mind. And I felt like I wasn't giving everything. Then it was like, right, okay, you've got a month now to sort this out. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> he provided. And did you share that with anybody at the time? Uh, I think only, the only person I said was Anna. With Anna. Yeah, yeah. I said yeah. to her, I'm being deadly serious a month and it's all over for me. <laughs> 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 so I don't know what to do here. Show the video now or ask you. Yeah, I think I'll show the video now because this is the, that's the before and this is the after. And you can, <laughs> you can talk a little bit about it then. Okay, <laughs> Nicholas, if you'd like to show the video, that'd be great. Look at all this stuff. I'm just stopping, stopping the mind. Stopping the mind from doing its thing because you're in the function yeah. and there's nowhere for it to go and you just want to go on to the next thing, the next thing, yeah. the next thing yeah. and you're just totally Enjoy in that it. service and that joy. Yeah. So now all of the thoughts that I used to have about all those things are totally and utterly gone yeah. and they're not even in the way. Yeah. They're not even, even, even there anymore. Yeah. So it's just like so, such a beautiful gift and I just want to serve in any way that I can. You know, it's like right now I'd be like, if you want a cup of tea, I'll go and make you a cup of tea. Like it just feels <laughs> like like i can't stop being in that given but it's but but from the first place 
it was just like, it was all about me as an individual and what am I going to get from this place? And now all of a sudden it's like, wow, what can I give? And that was my prayer deep inside. Yeah. Teach me how to give because I do not know how to do that. I really do not know how to do that. I don't even understand what you are asking of me. I know that I can't do that. And slowly, through whatever, the miracle that it just seems like a <laughs> tiny mad idea that my mind just changed and then you're in total service to everything and everyone and then you can start to feel everything because you just feel it because you just want to be together you just want to be in it like come on come on let's all sleep together come on let's make dinner together whatever it is it doesn't matter what you're doing because the joy can come out and that's the beautiful thing, that it doesn't actually matter what you're doing. It doesn't matter at all. But as long as you feel together in it, oh my God, the possibilities are endless. And this is the, what we've got here. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah, Hallelujah and praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> so beautiful, Ken. Absolutely. And uh, Jason's here in the studio and he managed to capture that on camera. Beautiful. Yeah. So, yeah, your mind changed. The miracle yeah. happened. So I don't know if there's anything you want to add to that. Yeah. How, how that came about. Yeah, I, forgot, really. I forgot all about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it, it was the prayer and giving because I'd mm. felt so selfish in my life that really I'd, my whole life was all about me. I thought that that's what life was all about. It's like, it's just about me. It's just about what I can get, what I want to do, when I want to do it, and I'm not going to compromise in that. <clears throat> and then coming into this and reading The Course in Miracles, oh, it's all about giving, and I, was just, I just didn't understand it. It was just like alien to me. It was all about getting. So for so long, it was just, please show me what this is. This seemed like a real big key in my mind. In actual fact, he says that in the course. He says to learn actually how to give is a, is a, is a big turning point in your mind. Yeah, giving and, and receiving are yeah. the same. That's, that's, yeah. that's coming through. And yeah, the lesson as well. Lesson 66. Mm. My happiness yes. and my function oh, are one. Yeah. Yeah. So that really comes through in this video. Because the other thing was is it was really about accepting what was given. And that's what I wasn't doing. Okay. I wasn't accepting what was given. And then once I finally started to accept everything through that month of saying, listen, you've got to accept what's given to you really and really take it on. And then that's when something happened. Mm. Yeah, that's it. That's kind of what we're coming into, isn't it? You know, that whatever our functions mm. are, you know, whether it's cleaning or it's... Um, doing a show or um something else it's like we're coming to learn that it's all the same it's all yeah. for our happiness mm -hmm. and um yeah but we have to go through that process of mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> i don't want to do this why am i cleaning again or yeah. why am i doing maintenance yeah. or whatever it might be and uh yeah so that's beautiful you know that we can we can come to that through function yeah. um yeah and i'm aware that you've got um another new assignment, mm. project, function, whatever way you want to call it, a relationship in the world, actually, mm. you know, that, that's come in with Anna, who you mm. mentioned earlier. So um, I'd just like to ask you how that came mm. about, how you got to know Anna. And mm. I know that when I came to the community five months ago, you seemed to always be together, mm. you know, like in function <laughs> or one thing yeah. or another. So, yeah. Yeah, it was like funny because like wherever we went, we were just – the spirit was just constantly bringing us together, whether it was in the kitchen. Right? We'd just be constantly like walking past each other or something. And she came to a retreat in the beginning. And then she came, stayed on for like 10 days, I think. And then she decided to come. And she'd kind of like message me. Um, and so it was like she felt like comfortable around me. And so she was just kind of like coming towards me. But I didn't really see, we didn't see anything in it. This has like been going on for like eight months now, nine months probably. And it was just our paths were like crossing. I, I didn't want a relationship. I wasn't, I'm not really into them, I've got to be honest. <laughs> um, <laughs> not in the way of the world, like um, it doesn't really interest me. However, it was like becoming more and more obvious that there was a lot of healing. And I always feared that 
I have a lot of projections and a lot of judgments and I know that they're in my mind, but it always felt like to me that nothing is ever good enough. That no matter what anyone can do, it's never, ever good enough. And I felt like I felt horrible that I'm going to be putting this on to another. And that's why I decided that I didn't want to do it. But of course, this is what it's all about. And so <clears throat> really, that's all we're doing is we're bringing the darkness to the light. And so being very, very honest. So it's actually been very, very healing that she's been very, very open for me to actually share. I've probably told her absolutely everything that I actually think. Yeah. And she just doesn't, she doesn't mind. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she says, I oh, know it's not you. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think you had a little bit of help along the way, didn't you? you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Around this relationship. <laughs> yeah, there's been a lot of help. It's like, you and Anna, you and Anna. And I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of sort of like coming together. We did have a period where it was just expressing. And that was like helpful. Like, okay, you two just express. And then that's when I, just said, okay, listen, if, if, if you can handle this, then I'm just going to tell you everything. So I did. Mm -hmm. So we kind of like had that. And then the time when it came in, we all had a um, community meeting and I was sitting there and I was like really praying and I knew something deep was happening. And these words came to me and it was, um, show me the wisdom for my greater good. They just came to me. The wisdom isn't even a word that I normally use. It just came, mm -hmm. show me the wisdom of my great, greatest good. And I thought, well, that's, that's pretty cool. So I kept saying that over and over again. And then during the sharing, um, Lisa says to me, yeah, what's going on with you and Anna? And I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> and so I was still not. And then after the meeting, literally the same again, Anna comes walking around the corner. I come walking around the corner. And I'm just like, remember my prayer and just thinking, okay maybe I have to actually commit to something. But of course, it's not committing to another body. It's committing to the mind, committing okay. to the Holy Spirit yeah. to go deeper into that. Mm -hmm. So once I'd finally let go of, oh, I don't want a special relationship. I'm not interested in joining with somebody. I'm interested in joining the mind that once I could open up to that mm -hmm. and I could see uh, the prayer was answered that this is for my greater good. Mm -hmm. So that's when, yeah, I committed basically. Mm. beautiful mm. okay so that's all my questions and we've still got about five minutes so, so that's kind of funny because that's also yeah. it's funny I even like sharing all this because this is something that i would not share i don't normally share about relationships there's something like just i just wouldn't share mm. <laughs> i just wouldn't say it to anybody so it's yeah. kind of funny that I'm even doing this live now. Yeah. So, okay, do it live. Okay, let's do that. Yeah. <laughs> Just to wash it all away. Yeah, because I know I mentioned it to you, you know, when we chatted, yeah. we had like about half an hour talk mm. um, and that's all we've done around this show together and yeah. it was just perfect just that half an hour um, but it came in quite naturally mm. to ask you you know like about the relationship and um, I know you had a little bit of resistance yeah. then it was like oh I don't know <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it just felt I don't know yeah. it feels really natural that um, you're talking about it and I know that um, you mentioned something about it's not like a a relationship in the world mm. so i don't know if you want to expand on that how it does actually feel and what's mm. different you know it's just in total purpose mm -hmm. there's nothing else like going on it's like there's just this mirror there that wants to be totally open to god to the holy spirit and everything is welcome in that so there's like there's no need to i don't have to please her she doesn't have to please me mm -hmm. of course all these things come in but really they're just like the superficial stuff that you believe in a relationship oh i've got to be a good boy to get what i want and those sorts of things and really that sort of like feels like a lot of that is out of the way of course it it gets acted out in certain ways mm -hmm. but because it's so purposeful that yeah that really mm. yeah yeah, it feels really good. Yeah. yeah, I know that, um, you know, like we have a, a lunchtime expression sessions and, and yeah, I've never known this before, <laughs> so it's really interesting to watch it. But, you know, like anybody that's in relationship is talking about the relationship, mm. you know, like in depth. And, mm. uh, and it's really beautiful. It's mm. really beautiful to see that, you know, like, and, um, yeah, that openness that you've got. Mm. 
you know, to, to whatever's coming in and it's all in purpose. And, yeah, well, it's yeah. taken a lot of courage, I've got to be honest. Absolutely. Because <laughs> it was so funny because yeah. it was like, yeah, you've got to share in the group. And it's like, oh, my God. But, yeah, it actually feels good just to keep, just to keep letting it all go. Like there's nothing really going on. <laughs> but yeah. the ego just wants to hide these little stones, like, oh, you don't have to say that or mm. whatever. Yeah. And so it just feels really good. And I guess what, what, what I find with it, which is kind of amazing, is these things that are stuck in my mind where I think, oh, God, this is terrible, I think this, or whatever, that each time I express, it just lights mm. me up more. So yeah. it just feels so, like, worth it. Yeah. I just feel lighter in my mind each time. So mm. and it's incentive. like, yeah, all the ego mm. thoughts, it's like it's not that none of us haven't felt them yeah. or, you know, so it's all in the mind anyway. It's like, okay, thank you for saying that because exactly. it was in my mind too. <laughs> exactly. So it's always really helpful for the whole. And, uh, yeah. yeah, so thanks for doing it for us. Oh, you're very welcome. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, we've still got a couple of minutes. So I don't know if there's anything else that you feel to to add. I don't I think I've dried up for questions. Um but I do feel, yeah, I'm just so grateful yeah. that you're here and that and uh, we're able to walk this journey together. It's just been incredible yeah. these last five months. <laughs> Lots of ups and downs. We've upset one another at times and we've expressed it all yeah. and uh yeah yeah that's the beautiful mm. thing isn't it when we all know that we're that we're truly in that purpose mm. and you see that it's not personal and you can just let it up and let it go mm. knowing that it is for all of us truly yeah. it's such a gift i remember i said to lisa once when i was when we were doing expression sessions and when someone else expresses it's always for me and then you feel the release from that and you yeah. think oh my god this is amazing mm. how would i've got to that place in my mind, where, wherever that was buried. And now I'm being released from it. So I, I named it, oh, this is the lazy man's guide to enlightenment. You can sit <laughs> back and just be released without even have to do, do anything. <laughs> so that's the beauty of being in community. <laughs> you can sit back and enjoy the ride. <laughs> I think it takes a little bit more than that. <laughs> You've got to be a bit willing. <laughs> yeah, you have to be willing, of course. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you have to be willing. Mm. But you won't it. be here if you weren't willing, so yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, just feel so grateful, and I need to give you a hug. <laughs> yeah. yeah, thank you for inviting me on. It's been wonderful. <laughs> Okay, thank you everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us. It's been amazing. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.